Hey guys, it's me, Cubix. I hurt my neck, which is why I'm sitting here looking like Quasimodo. <laughs> I made a community post on YouTube a few days ago saying how I dropped a full second off of my averages, and it sounded a little bit clickbaity. But I posted this picture on Instagram showing the results. I went from high 11s or low 12s down to a 10.8 average of 100 in a single day. Just to make sure I wasn't just solving well all of a sudden, I actually took a break, and I came back the next day, and I got a 10.9 average of 100. So how'd I do this? By finally having fewer pauses between cross and F2L. I went from this to this. Cross to F2L transition has been a huge problem in my solves since I learned CFOP like 10 years ago, and it's always been something really hard for me to fix. That being said, if you're already really good at cross stuff to transition, you can probably skip this video because I don't think anything I'm going to say here is going to be groundbreaking or revolutionary. It's just something that didn't click with me until now. So I was sitting here watching some JPerm videos, as we all do, and specifically I was looking at some of his critique videos. Something he mentioned in passing a couple times was during F2L you want to look for a corner piece first instead of an edge piece. I didn't really think much of this when I heard it, because naturally when I do F2L, that's what I do. I tend to look for the corner pieces first instead of the edge pieces. But then it occurred to me that I could do that for the first F2L pair as well, which I know sounds stupidly obvious, but this is why it never occurred to me. When you look up a tutorial for a crossed F2L transition, especially for people who are sub-15 or sub-12, it's expected that you're able to track your first F2L pair during inspection. For me, that was always really difficult, because I frankly don't have great spatial reasoning, and a lot of my energy is already spent remembering my cross solution. This is why in my solves you'll typically see me not using that much inspection time. It's because using more often leads to me forgetting a cross piece in exchange for some very weird F2L case. And yes, this is something I can work on, but it's also something that I have been working on since like 2013 with very limited success. Of course, the baby step for that is to just track one piece, either an edge or a corner, but even that is sometimes fairly difficult, and more importantly if you track a bad corner or edge, you might end up not seeing a more obvious case after you're done with cross. For example, let's say this is the scramble that we have and we want to solve the cross on white. We see that the cross solution is not so difficult and so we think that we can track this corner piece. But if we do the cross solution and we track it, we notice that it's back here. And that's fine that we tracked it correctly. However, by tracking this piece and not opening up our options to other situations, we don't notice that this is actually a much easier pair that we can solve first. So if you're like me, and you suck at tracking pieces, there is another thing you can do. You can solve your cross slower and track a corner piece as you're finishing your cross. This requires less spatial reasoning, less inspection, and less overcommitting to a potentially bad F2L case when a better one is present. The reason you want to look for a corner piece first is because those are typically harder to find, yet easier to identify. When you're done with the cross, you have eight edges and eight corners left to solve, However, all the F2L edges have to be in the top two layers since the bottom layer is already filled with the cross edges. In contrast, corner pieces can be either on the D layer or the U layer, and depending on their orientation, they could be very, very hard to recognize. Luckily, chances are that there will be at least one corner that is easily visible either in the front face or the top layer when you're finishing up the cross, and from there it's much easier to find the corresponding edge piece. For example, in this situation, after we're done with the cross, we find that this is the first corner piece that we want to solve. If we look around the cube, and actually just holding it in this orientation, we can already determine where the edge piece might be. For example, these two edges are yellow, so we know that those cannot be the edge that we want. Similarly, these two are yellow, and so they cannot correspond to this corner piece. And this one is very obviously wrong, as is this one. So our only options in this case are this piece, and this piece. So depending on how you're holding the cube, for example if you're holding it this way when you're done with cross, it's very easy to see that this is orange and therefore it cannot be the right piece and therefore it must be this one. Importantly, just like F2L, it might be beneficial for you to actually solve your cross slower than you normally do at first. But if you already have good F2L fundamentals and you know how to look ahead, then that might not be necessary since what I'm presenting here is really a change in perspective rather than a new technique. All that being said, it's still useful to try and predict your first F2L pair. For example, if we have an easy cross case, such as this one where we only have to solve these two pieces, we can recognize that the moves required to solve the cross don't affect the pieces back here. And in this case, we actually have a solved F2L pair here already. So we know that if we do the cross solution by using the D layer and then the front and right moves, we're not going to affect this pair at all. Additionally, just because less inspection time is needed for your cross doesn't mean you shouldn't use more inspection. You can always look for a better solution, better cross on a different color, or maybe see if you can build an X cross. 
For example, here, the white cross seems to be pretty bad. In contrast, the yellow cross is essentially already built. One last point that I want to make in this video is that in general, you should try different things to see what works for you. In this case, the dogma is to be able to track your first F-tool pair during inspection. But after practicing for years, it was time I admitted that that was just not going to work for me. Don't be afraid to break the mold and see if there are better options available to you. Obviously, don't form bad habits, but if something just isn't working, there's really no need to keep forcing yourself to do what others are doing. I know this was kind of a weird video, but I haven't actually seen this explicitly laid out before, so I thought that it might be helpful for some of you out there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and until next time, toodles.